So we're adding from left to right. We make sure to line up the ones place with the ones place, the decimal points, and so on. Right away it's clear that no column adds to more than 9, so there's not going to be any number carrying. We can just start declaring the answer as we go. 2 and 0 is 2, 7 and 2 is 9, 3 and 5 is 8, 8 and 1 is 9, 1 and 1 is 2. Here's the same problem again, only this time let's change the 1 to a 3. 27 plus 2 is 29. A quick glance to the next column to the right shows that there will be no carrying from that column, so we can write 29. In the next column, 3 plus 5 is 8. Can we write 8? Well, the next column over is greater than 9, so there will be a carried 1. Instead of writing 8, we write 9. The next column over adds to 11, but we've already carried the 1, so this column gets the digit 1. We can write the 1 because the next column adds to 2. The last situation we should take a look at is one in which carrying causes more carrying in a sort of domino effect. With a little practice, you can learn to declare the correct answers to this type of problem quickly and effortlessly. From this point forward, let's get into the habit of looking at the whole problem first so that we know what to expect and how to handle it. The column with 8 plus 3 will cause us to carry a 1 to the left. The column with 3 plus 6 now has an additional 1, making it, in turn, add to 10. So it too will carry a 1 to the left. The first two columns add to 28, but we write 29 seeing that there's a carried 1 coming from two columns over in the domino effect. The next column adds to 9, but there's a carried 1 coming from the right, so we write 0. We don't write 10 because we've already carried the 1, we write 0. The next column adds to 11, so our non-carried amount, the amount over 10, is 1. We can write the 1 because there are no carried amounts from the right. And the last column adds to 2. Another way to solve this problem quickly in your head is to look at it and think silently to yourself that the sum is 289.11d2. Yes, 11d is not a real word, but a nonsense word is useful as a placeholder to hold an amount in memory and remind you to make a final correction. 11 doesn't fit in the space intended for a single digit, and so 1 is carried to the left. 289.112 corrects to 290.12. When adding two numbers, you will never carry a number larger than one. So, we're looking for columns which will cause a carried one, and we're looking for any column which adds to nine and also has a neighbor to the right which will push the nine up to a 10. Take a look at this example. The first column adds to nine, obviously. The next column to the right adds to eight. Next, there is a column that adds to 9, and its neighbor to the right will give up a carried 1, which will in turn force the 9 to become a 10. So here we have the domino effect again. Now let's start writing the answer. 9 we can write because no carries are possible from the right. 2 and 6 are 8, but we write 9 because of the carried 1 that comes from two columns over. 3 and 6 are 9, but that number gets pushed up to 10, and we write 0. 8 and 4 are 12, but again, we write the amount over 10, which is 2. We can write 2 because the next column will give us no carried amount. And 5 and 1 make 6. Or we could try out our nonsense word method. Looking at the problem, the answer is 989.1286. That would correct to 
Here's a stack of numbers to add. What you were probably taught was to work from right to left and keep a running total in your head for each column, and then write down the sum along with any carried numbers to the adjacent column. While this method works, it's needlessly cumbersome, especially when instead of five rows of numbers to add, you have dozens or even hundreds. A simpler method is needed, and here it is. And of course we start on the left. As we add our way down the column, we're looking for and marking any spot where we've reached or surpassed the number 10. Then just remember the amount above 10 and continue to add. For example, four plus six is 10. So we mark the 10 by crossing out the six. The amount over 10 in this case is zero. Zero plus five is five. Five plus four is nine. Nine plus two is 11. So here we cross out the two and our final leftover amount is one. We write down one under the column. We made two cross out marks indicating two tens. So we're carrying two to the left. So that column adds to 21. On the next column over, seven plus two is nine. Nine plus three is 12. Cross out the three and continue adding with two. Two plus one is three. Three plus three is six. So we have six left plus one mark indicating that one gets carried. The column adds to 16. Write six under the column and one to the left of it. On the next column, eight plus nine is 17. Cross out the nine and continue adding with the seven. Seven plus three is 10. Cross out the three and continue with zero. Zero plus six is six. Six plus four is 10. The column adds to 30. At this point, you can add these three sums together, but be sure to add them together the way they are lined up. There are no zeros as placeholders written in here, but they are implied. The answer is 2,290. Add the following numbers in under five seconds. If your instinct was to work from left to right and anticipate carried numbers, that's good. But this problem calls for an even simpler way. Simply add 300 and take away one. No carrying needed, barely any thinking at all. 4,567 plus 300 is 4,867. Minus one is 4,866. You may notice that prices are often one penny or one dollar shy of a round number. So it's handy to recognize when and how to use this method. In this example, if we think in dollars, we're adding $400 and $200, less $2. So the answer is 598. 